Right, we got Tan and Hedges here. Do you want to go ahead and give an introduction? Yeah, uh, I'm Tan and Hedges. Uh, I played for UH Ultimate between uh, 2015 through 2019. Um, and I was there in the beginning. Uh, I actually started the team with my friend Michael Delp. Um, so kind of one of the OGs, I guess. So what, uh, what made you want to start a UH Ultimate Club? Uh, so I guess it, it would, I would start back when I um, started playing Ultimate. I got into Ultimate because my sister was uh, about to be engaged to this guy named Adam, and she wanted us to play the Huntsville Summer League, the recreational league up in Huntsville. <laughs> and so she thought it would be a fun way to get to know him and like spend time with her. Um, and so I ended up, him and I like bonded really well over playing Ultimate together, and then I just started playing. I played every year. Um, and then 2014, I tried to make the jump to club in the local uh, top level team freaks of nature at the time they were called. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't make the team. And so uh, Rampage was the club team I played for, but there was no, only summer league and club pretty much existed. Um, and so I had a couple of friends that played freaks that went to UH. And so we said like, the best way we could possibly play is by having a college team. And so um, at the time, I mean, it's no like fault of anybody else's. I mean, we just kind of got busy, but some people apparently had tried to start the team before. And so I thought it was just going to be this really arduous process, but really it was just, um, I talked with the right people. And of course, like um, if anybody like new students or anything at UAH or anybody in the community sees this, it's like in 2014, there was no student center. Um, a lot of the UAH was, just over like 7,000 students. So like it was a much different campus. Um, and so like there wasn't, I don't think like there was as big of a push for like student life. There, there was Greek life and whatnot, but there really wasn't any student clubs. There was no, um, even like the gym existed, but it was like had only been around for a while. So it's just like, it was a lot, it wasn't as uh, readily available to like, you could just go to like a an office and like sign up for something like you had to do a lot of like who do I talk to and like just search the email a bunch of people and so um, basically it was just so I wanted to make the premier club team the next year um, and so I decided to form a college team trying to get more practice in. Yeah that makes a lot of sense. What, were, what was the biggest challenge that you faced like right when the club was made like <laughs> as a team I guess? Uh, the fact that uh, we only had 12 people. <laughs> so yeah. like, uh, I, I, I don't like to think that it was like, like we were, I feel like it makes kind of like a, an old person thing to say, be like, Oh, we were tougher back then. But <laughs> it was like the people that were there, we, so it was, I started the team and like, I, I would say I majority like Delp, Michael Delp, we call him Delp. He was there. And he was uh, the other co-captain and it really like the team was led by uh, Tom Radcliffe, um, Danny Yates and Michael Delp from a player standpoint. And then we had a former student, Michael Roby. He was the coach and Roby, I would say like he was, the, he was definitely, he was the coach of the whole team, but he was primarily there because after those four guys, it was all rookies. So there was 12 people, but eight of them were still rookies. Um, and so our practices, it's like you can't even scrimmage seven v seven. So our scrimmages were two to three times a week. We would play mini um, at this field called Kiwanis. Um, and for anybody that's not, doesn't know where that is, it's uh, basically on a plateau next to the Huntsville Botanical Gardens. And so like the fact that it's on a plateau means that it's like perennial 10 mile an hour winds and it's freezing. But we would play mini for up to two hours just like nonstop, no breaks. And we would invite co people from the community to come play. And so like, that's how we just like, and I, I would say like, that's why it makes me feel like kind of old to say like it was tougher. It was just like you had, it was like a really small group of guys that just played a ton. Like old, mini is like, like a very hard way of like, it's very stressful and like um, physically taxing. So it's just like, we were really like a band of brothers playing in the cold and it was awesome. So I think that, I guess that's what I'm saying is like, it was just hard as you couldn't, you couldn't practice yeah. um, how we do now. Like there's no, there was no infrastructure. So it was all like 
whatever we could do, we did. So. Yeah, that's awesome. What's your What's your favorite memory of playing UH? Uh, it would have to be uh, 2017 when we went to nationals, D3 nationals. We were still it was the last year of uh, being D3 before moving up. Um, and you know that was besides me trying to improve as a player to make um, the club team freaks or anything beyond that. You know the goal was uh, I've always been someone that I I have I like I love to set I love to set goals like even if it's like something that like it, 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 sometimes it's just being a placeholder it's something that like a, a benchmark to like improve but I had dreams when we were signed I remember just sitting at the table in the student center being like this is what like I want to go to nationals and like I want to compete for a title and um it was just like we the first year we ended up with, like I said we had 12 people we ended up, it's kind of sad, but we, I scored a Callahan on the last point of our season in the first year and we went up 12, six, and then we lost 13, 12. Um, and it was terrible. It was like in that like six point break, like run, we lost like four or five people. Delp had broken his leg the day before. And, and we were just like falling. Like we, we were, it was just basically, we couldn't possibly be in good enough shape um and so like we just started we had like seven people and like it, it was just too much and so that was hard and then the next year tom that was tom only played one year and uh danny came back um and delp didn't come back the next year and so we had a bunch like half like the team doubled in size but we lost like a lot of our top talent but we ended up losing in the game to go to nationals at regionals and so like the first year we lost in the semifinals then we got into the game to go against the team that eventually won the national championship. And so then the next year we ended up going to nationals. And so like, it, it was just like, it, it's not only like, uh, it was years of uh, preparation and like training. And it's also like we had come short twice before. And so it was very fulfilling and affirming as like a organization, as a player to like, to really like have a goal and like, kind of like get checked down a few times but end up like accomplishing it so that was probably the highlight so you said you kind of started uh for the uh ultimate club so that you could make you know have practice and make freaks what are some ways you feel like you grew as an ultimate player through uh, uh i was fortunate um probably uh, through my own like <laughs> voice and like um me demanding at some point is like i got a lot of playing time and and like i, I would say like i i think the fact in the beginning i would say like the whole the whole maybe not necessarily in the beginning beginning but towards like after the first year um i think people somewhat looked at me as someone to like lead the team like i think i was always even in 2017 i had like left the team for like academic reasons but for the most part i feel like people looked at me as a leader if i even if i didn't technically hold the title of captain and so it gave me this opportunity to be a leader um but it, i think just primarily i just got a ton of playing time um i think it's when you're given a lot of reps um, either you kind of, um, you kind of almost are forced to improve. Um, and, um, I think it's, um, I think also like, it, I mean, the UH ultimate team to me, um, it definitely is like my baby in some, in some ways it's like, I cared not just about like me as a player, but like, I really cared about like just growing the team in general, like how it was perceived by the university. Like, um, it wasn't, just so much it was like i was selfish in some ways but i feel like i also cared more than other people did about just the club itself and like a whole and like developing it um and so um i think just the way i improved was just i was fortunate to be around um now i see it as just like some amazing players um men and women and people that were like, like in the, the community not necessarily in the beginning from uh itself but like the huntsville um, community was like they were willing to come out to practices I mean they were there with us um, and then there's like the Bob Jones workout group in the morning like 
um, I don't I don't go anymore now that I don't live in Birmingham and I never was a super regular attendee but there was a point where like UAH people would show up and like work out and um, you know there was just like they cre they helped create a lot of opportunities and were there for us to like improve on so I'm very fortunate I think as much as it's my own dedication to get better is I was also surrounded by people who elevated the bar and gave me opportunities to improve. Um, man, that's awesome. Um, what is some advice you'd give to new players? Hmm. Uh, I guess like if I had to, I'm thinking of like, I don't want to like go off on like say like a ton of things. I'm trying to think of like yeah. one, like one specific, like if something I could say that would apply, like be a foundation. Hmm. Uh, I would say that I would say that you have to be dedicated to like if you. You have to be dedicated to, um, no, that's not right. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying to like, I'm trying to like, cause honestly, like I've gone through like a roller coaster of my own career of like managing my social life, academics, ultimate, like, and what's something like, I feel like now I'm much more, oh. I think back, I'm like, man, like I, I made some mistakes. I think, I think the thing that would be most served is be learn how to like compartmentalize your life that like is I struggled a lot where like especially right when we started the team and we're playing all this time like I, it was so exciting and like we were just playing like we had all these tournaments uh, like uh, that I think that's the other thing is we played a ton of tournaments and like there were a bunch of like smaller ones like it wasn't like this big tally classic Florida warm up like 20 teams there's a B team there's like a D1 D3 women's division I mean it was like there's 16 teams and it's like a two weekend up in Vanderbilt or something and I guess that there's still a lot of teams but that was like the big ones and I think is I I let my passion and drive to get better at ultimate dominate other areas of my life so like my academics suffered my relationships like with family and like it was basically I was like so chaotically um like in love with playing ultimate like it basically I couldn't like it, it basically like it felt like it was like spreading to other parts of my life yeah. and so it's like I think and I, that's why I hesitated to say like be really passionate about ultimate because I've seen it over my years not only just with UH but with other club sports is like people let their passion for ultimate dominate their life. And it's like, it's like one, you can't play club ultimate. You can't play UH if you're not in school. So it's like, you got to make sure your grades are good, but it's like, there's, I almost felt more happiness playing ultimate after I found like a passion for like, I'm trying to go to med school and like I'm working in Birmingham now. It's like, it's almost like if ultimate is your, that's the only thing you ever want to do. It can be, very it can like let you down um like fulfill fulfillment wise and so it's like find something that else like you're it's fun to have like it's a passionate hobby at this point and so it's like don't let like when you go to practice be 100 percent involved like listen to the coaches listen to the captains give it 100 percent lay out get dirty get scuffed up that kind of thing and like but like when practice is over like and you're supposed to be like studying it's like be there don't watch film while you're trying to do homework. Don't like, don't skip out on studying to go throw. Like it's, you're really not helping yourself in the long run. Like you're not helping the team. You're not going to be better player because of it. It's like be, get some time management, show up on time, be where you're supposed to be mentally and physically in the moment. So that's my, that, that's what I had to learn kind of the hard way, but I feel like that's going to help you out in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. That's good advice. And that kind of applies to existing players too. I mean, I guess just all players. Right. But um, how could, I guess, people that are already on the club, what would you say to them if they needed help? Like, you know, not just getting new people in, but getting them involved in like bringing them up to speed with Ultimate. 
so but like how to how to bring next um players up is you're saying like skill yeah, wise skill wise yeah uh i uh i i think what you can do um is uh, i i remember it, well so like our team when i was younger like my sophomore year like i was well i started the team my sophomore year because i went five years um but it was we never it, only until like i would say 2018 and 2019 did right i felt like i truly was looking at like new people as like freshmen like we're in like in a totally like your freshman year my last year like did i really look i'm like man these people are like we're two different almost generations coming through and i felt like you know i didn't try to be like a dad figure it was more just like older brother we're just there to like you're not i'm not trying to like be pretentious and like just give un unsolicited advice or something like that but it's like lead by example but it's also try don't like dismiss the things that people are interested in in there it's like that to me that's such like a huge turnoff it's like like i remember uh, i love him to death is like i like i respect uh you're gonna laugh at this is chris youngblood like he to me like when i first met him like i just think like he was like a super fast guy in a straight line but he was kind of like kind of lanky not like in a negative way but he also has drip and like that's an Alex Guerrero word is like he has like a swagger about like what he wears and like how he styles his hair it's like I don't think I like his levels are far surpassing mine but like I just tried to like I didn't want to like be like dude that's dumb no one cares about that like you got to focus like just let people be themselves and it's like it's such a turnoff as like I think for a new person if you want to like not only do you not know the sport but if like he he had never played ultimate but if I like dismissed like what he personally likes, like how he dresses and like how he likes what he's interested in, like if it's like TV shows, anime, sports he likes to watch, it's like just like accept people for like it doesn't it doesn't really like it's not like a morally apprehensible thing or something like that. Just like let people be themselves and like if they're there to work, like just let them be um, be accepting, be willing to like learn and like um engage with people beyond like their skill of ultimate. I think that's the biggest thing for the next generation is like recruit players. It's like, don't look at someone just for the value of them as like athletic wise or what they can contribute to the team. Look at them for like their character and like, be like, man, this person's like a fun, they have a good energy, like vibe check basically, like see what they can like bring to like, are they good people to be around and not just like good, like I guess morally, but like, are they like, do they elevate the people around them? Do they bring a positive energy? I think that's like, um, so I guess like to build them up ultimate wise, I think, um, I, I, I guess I just think like allowing people to, there's like a, as a leader, you have to be able to, you have to put in work to find areas where people will succeed. Um, and like, I, I guess like since I was talking to you, Bradley, I remember the conversations with you when it is like you had this tendency to like, you had a wonderful ability to naturally lay out from goalkeeping. I remember that your brother said that you were a goalkeeper is like, and so like we tried to find a place for you on the team. It's like, where can we like take the things he's already good at and basically like let that like shine in a sense. And so it's like, we found a position for you and we're like, when this person does this, like just lay out for it. And I remember you got like an incredible amount of D's just by doing that. And so it's like, there's a, don't just, if someone's not naturally already good at throwing, like don't make them be a handler, like kind of find some place, like try to find some place, like they're going to succeed. Um, and like, they'll develop this stuff later on. But I feel like that's, that's the main thing is like engage with them on a personal level outside of ultimate, but then it's also find something that they're, trying to see what they're good at already and like try to plug them into the team that way. And then also like just be friends with them. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good advice. Um, that's all the questions I have, but I really appreciate you, you know, doing this interview and not just giving like, you know, give honest answers and we're just talking about ultimate. I think that's awesome.
Oh yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I haven't talked to you in a while, so it's good to like chat with you. And of course, like as much as I said, like uh, I'm in Birmingham now and I, uh, it's no longer my team. Um, I'm glad that the team is, I think honestly, that was my, my biggest concern is like uh, it was um, after Eli and I left my biggest worry. I was like, I just pray. I was like, I hope the team, back like in 20 years and i'm like this old guy that's like um i say old is like i'll be 20 i'll be 45 then <laughs> but like yeah. i hope i'm like i'm old and like is i i and this is like a random anecdote but it's like um brown university won the national championship like uh 2019 mm -hmm. and when they won they had a guy named josh sipperstein who used to be considered like one of the greatest ultimate players in the world um, mm -hmm. in the early 2000s, but he actually won the Callahan, the Heisman Trophy, um, and won a national championship in 2001, I believe, with Brown, and so, like, I, of course, we never won a national championship, but I just think it would be so cool, like, that, I, I really thought, like, after I left, I was like, that's who I want to be, like, I want to be in the stands, like, cheering for the UAH men and women's team, like, for years to come, and, like, the next, like, multiple generations, and so it's just, um, I'm just happy like this is like still a thing and like um, this is awesome that you guys are doing this kind of content so yeah yeah me me and Christian Cal are all like really new to the captaining experience so we'll definitely be like giving you a call you know asking for advice and stuff I'm always here and I'm here for uh, just the chat and whatnot I mean I pretty much I made my bed for this, by the way. So I, I realize I'm blocking it. So, but like I made my bed. Really, so I just, nice. I just, um, yeah, I did. I'm gonna turn the screen away from <laughs> What you don't see is like below this, it's just like there's just garbage. You just yeah. can't see it. So, I it from view. exactly. So, um, but yeah. So, anytime again, like, I don't know if you're still recording this, but like if you want, if we want to collaborate, like um, making like content and stuff like that, like I did Brett's Callahan video and stuff. And yeah. so it's like, if you want, I don't know, I, you made your own Callahan video, you made your own highlight film and stuff, but mm -hmm. I'm not saying like I'm better or anything like that. But if like, there's a project where we're like, you need like someone else like editing, like to get it done faster, like film and stuff like that, just hit me up. And like, um, I feel like I'm pretty efficient with that kind of stuff. So if you're busy and you need someone else, like you can always hit me up for that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, I remember you showing me, I mean, we went, I went to your house and we made that, that, uh, one video, the Casey Bray and yeah. remake. And I just went on group me recently and saw, I, I was like scrolling through looking for a link to some footage. And I saw where you like reposted the, the tweet where he was like, yeah he, like liked it and it was like tickets to or like, stand up i thought that was so funny yeah it's like uh i'll, I'll i know this is like I, it feels like when i say this is like tooting my own horn is like i remember i feel like people don't that sometimes i feel like i come off as like i don't like i'm kind of like uh i don't remember stuff or like i'm kind of like forgetful but i like i remember that stuff like super like it's like crystal clear like I remember like we were because we were going it was the night before Chris Kringle and mm -hmm. like I you were staying at my house and I said hey do you want to like because I had made we had made the video the week prior the other one yeah um with Brett and like my roommate Keller and then he and then I said like do you want to make this video and I remember it was like it happens to every video that I've made so far is when we're like, yeah, it'll be like two hours. And it's like eight hours later, <laughs> two in the morning, I'm editing and we got to leave at like five in the morning to drive to Montgomery or something like that. And yeah. like, I post it and like, I just remember like that video is actually the most viewed video I have. I think it's almost to a thousand. Wow. I like to think yeah. that it is so, <laughs> um, but we'll have to do another one. I guess it's been over a year now. Um, it yeah. feels like yesterday when we did it, but um, we'll have to do one and get Chris and Cal. Oh, yeah, because we were <laughs> we were Chris and Cal, right? Yeah. Yeah, so. we were. <laughs> I forgot that too. We'll that doesn't, to get... doesn't like doesn't even. I don't even think that was mentioned, or was it? It was just like the casting or something. Yeah, it was casting, and then like in the description, I don't think I think 
I remember Chris saying something about it. I don't think Cal said anything to me about it. Um, yeah. But I remember because like our the joke in there was like that. Our, I don't know if you're still recording. I'm acting like you're still recording. Yeah, I I am. I don't. I just didn't have a good place to stop. I was like, I'll just let it go for a little bit. Okay. I'll just cut it out. Or, or leave it in. I might just leave it in. Do you want me to like? I don't know if you're gonna like. I I wouldn't be surprised if you just let this whole conversation in. But you want me to do like to say like you want to say something just so you have like. Yeah. If you have transition right. and we can just say something at the end, so it's like an actual definite end. All right, that's a good idea. Um. Oh uh, yeah. Thanks for doing the interview, Tenon. Means a lot to me and the UH club. So appreciate you coming on. Yeah, no problem, Bradley. Thanks for having me on and kind of posting this and asking me for just to give some takes on my career and just I guess for the next generation and whatnot. Um, wish you the best of luck with the upcoming season and the whole team. Uh, and you know, there's a uh, hope for anybody that joins the team or and existing players is that just because you don't see us around doesn't mean that we're not rooting for you and um you know we, a lot of us are here um i'll speak for myself it's just like i'm here um i'm kind of busy but you'll have to kind of reach out to me but i'm here for to do the best i can to improve you guys as a individuals or as a team and um, just wish you the best of luck especially can considering what's going on in the country with uh, the pandemic and whatnot. So hopefully you guys have a season. Um, and if you do, I know you guys are going to work hard and do the best you possibly can um, men and women's team. So yeah. Thanks yeah. for having me. Absolutely.